Who here likes animals? Yeah. I mean, not to, not to eat them, which is not nice, but like to play with them, to explore them, to figure out what they, how they live and what they do. Our next, well, just imagine a, a job that is perfectly designed for anyone who loves animals, who loves getting wet, who loves doing experiments, who loves finding things out. The next scientist is a senior aquatic biologist at the California Academy of Sciences. She spends most of her time with a particularly charismatic colony of African penguins. Please welcome Dr. Pamela Schaller. Hey. Thank you. Let me just start with, I was sitting uh, listening to people do the, what I was doing a long time ago. So I was in the seats where you guys were. Um, you can do what I'm doing. Um, study science, study math, um, learn as much as you can about animals. My job, I'm so excited about sharing my job with you. This is what I do. Um, half of my day, I'm in a wetsuit. <laughs> it's fantastic. This is a baby shark. Um, see how big it is? This thing is only about mm, a month old. Um, the female gave birth while she was with me. And the way that it works is um, sharks give birth, they lay eggs or they give live birth. And you're going to see in the next show, probably one or two slides, you're going to see how a shark actually gives birth. Um, I dive with octopuses or octopi, depending on <laughs> who you're listening to. Um, what I'm trying to do here is just examine her arms as a female. Um, and what I'm also trying to do is just um, interact with her. So I get underneath the water. Um, this is a very large tank that we had. It was supposed to represent the Farallons Islands. It's an island off the coast of, um, off the coast of California. Um, this is a um, giant Pacific octopus. And uh, one of my most favorite interactions. So this is a pelagic ray. Um, this ray, we want it to move. Um, those are a, that's a sling. That's what we call those things. Um, you put the ray in the sling in order to move it. Um, what we're doing here is we're actually ultrasounding this ray. And what we want to make sure, if we're moving animals, um, because some animals can be pregnant, we want to make sure if we're moving them and they are pregnant that we allow for the extra care for the, its offspring. Um, so that's what we're doing. You can see in the very center down here, there's a doctor and what he's doing. He's pretty much just has that, that same thing that we use on humans to be able to determine how well the offspring is developing within ourselves. Um, it's the same opportunity for us to be able to take a look inside of this animal. So this is a shark giving birth. In the upper left-hand corner, that is what a pregnant shark looks like. So just how humans get these big bellies when they start getting into seven, eight, nine months of pregnancy, um, it takes about 13 to 14 months for this animal to give birth. Uh, and it's not actually, they're not giving birth the whole time. They've got, <laughs> that would be a really long time. <laughs> um, and that's actually one of the offspring that has come out of her. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see it's upside, when, it, when they give birth, the babies are, and they're, they're basically upside down, and their bellies are close to the mom's belly. Um, and they come out swimming right away. They need to start feeding right away. The mom, after they give birth, the mom pretty much just leaves. Um, so they need to be self-sufficient. So that's why they're so large when they're born, because they need to be self-sufficient. So I know. <laughs> this is what I am so honored and privileged to do. Uh, I can't even tell you. Uh, lower right-hand corner, that penguin chick that is uh, not even 24 hours old. Um, and I oftentimes get to see them hatching out from their eggs. It takes about two days for it to come completely out. And sometimes when I'm checking on the egg, there's this little beak at the little hole, and it's ta it talks. It starts to call already. Even while it's inside of its egg, it starts to talk already. Um, and this is a really good example of what a penguin chick, a healthy penguin chick should look like. If you take a look at the feet, you see how nice and, and puffy they are. Um, they should be really well hydrated. And if you can take a look down towards the bottom here, there's actually, they're attached inside of the egg through something that's basically like an umbilical cord. Um, there's blood vessels that go in inside of that egg. And that's how the chick develops 
um, it's, it's feeding off of what's inside of that egg. So when they come out, we always keep checking and make sure that that area starts to heal up really well. And within 24 hours, you can see already that it's got a little scab on it. Uh, upper right-hand corner, those are two penguin chicks. Uh, they were brother and sister, so they're still with me today. Uh, fantastic, both of them are really fun birds to work with. Um, what I'm doing is I'm hand raising those birds. I'm at some point, usually around three or four weeks old, sometimes I need to step in and do some hand raising with them. Um, they do get somewhat imprinted on us, but I mean, it's uh, at some point, usually when they're about two or three years old, they begin to find a mate, a significant other, and they live together for the rest of their lives, and I just become kind of a third party to the relationship. And, <laughs> And then the um, upper left-hand corner of that is another one of those uh, white tip reef sharks. So I've had the privilege to build two buildings full, full of animals. <laughs> I've brought animals into new places. I've had to design exhibits. This is one of the processes in terms of being able to build a place. You have to think about everything. You have to think about um, where would penguin chicks be would it be safe for them? Where would adults be? Where, where would it be safe for them? Where would geriatric penguins, where would they live? We want them all to live together, but there's a lot of challenges with each of those. Um, the exhibit that we built is supposed to represent South Africa. It's supposed to represent Boulder's Beach. Um, this is me testing the exhibit out. Um, one thing you're gonna notice on the upper left-hand corner, you see how there's like these white panels, you see people kind of peeking through them. Um, this was me testing the exhibit out. I have on scuba gear just in case, because I designed this exhibit, I'm concerned about every aspect of it. And I'm bringing birds in for the first time. Number one, I don't want them to run into the glass, not realize that the glass is right there. Number two, I want to make sure that they can navigate around the pool. The lower right-hand corner, that's just pretty much, I just have to watch these penguins and make sure they get in and out of everything that I want them to. Uh, upper right-hand corner, I've been lucky enough for five years in a row to study these penguins, their behavior. Uh, you take a look, you see A, B, C, and D. Um, what I did was I spread the exhibit out, um, put it into quadrants, put it into four parts, and pretty much just looked at the penguins and how much time they spent in each, each quadrant to let me know, are they utilizing the entire exhibit? This is what the exhibit looks like. See, it's really kind of exciting to you know, be fr from that cement part and that testing part to be to this part. Um, These middle rocks down here, one of the things that I felt was really important was to be able to feed the penguins while they're swimming because that's what they would normally do in the wild. This allows me to be able to stand on these, this rock work and then feed the penguins. And I'll, we'll show you a video of that in a, a little bit. Uh, all that I do and everything that I have to do, um, it's, it can be stressful. I can, make me, I can be very nervous about it, especially because I'm dealing with animal lives, dealing with reproduction. Uh, I could be moving animals. Um, on the upper left-hand corner, um, that is me moving some very, very, very large sharks. It's hard to tell, but that animal was you know, bigger than me and weighed probably my weight plus a half. So 250 pounds or so, 225 pounds. First of all, I have to get that animal into this container. So it's not like I can just be like with a little net <laughs> and throw it into a container. Um, I actually had to get into a tank with a tank on my back, with a regulator in my mouth, and swim after this animal and grab a hold of the pectoral fins, the fins on the side, and steer him <laughs> around until he got into a sling. And then that sling had to get carried. You see how large that sling is? That sling had to get carried by eight people total. That's how heavy that animal was. Put it in this container and eventually drove this animal all the way to Denver. And you know, one of the funniest things, so I'm in um, Nevada and I pull up to go get gas in a truck and I've got these sharks, there's two of them, eventually there's two of them in there. I have these sharks in the back of the truck and these guys pull up next to me and they've got horses in the back of their truck. Right? And, I'm, and they, obviously, because the truck looks so unique, they wanted to know what was in there, and I said, sharks. And the guys walked away from me, and then it registered, and they turned and they looked at me, and they were like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm driving sharks across the country. It's my job. Uh, lower right-hand corner, um, Good Morning America came on, did some weather <laughs> in the penguin exhibit. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> this is most, what, mostly lately what I've been known for. Um, this is a penguin wetsuit. I'm just going to put this down for a minute. I am not in the habit of putting clothes on animals. 
However, can you see his head and his tail, just how exposed it is? Can you see? Mm. You can see how bald he is? He didn't really have much feathers on him at all. Penguins use feathers for insulation. It's required for them to be able to swim and stay warm. And this bird, he's supposed to replace his feathers every year and did not. And I, had, I ran out of options with him. I tried heaters, uh, we tried medication, and nothing worked on him. And this is my creation. <laughs> um, it's a little penguin wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. You know what's really exciting is I get to see this bird every day. His name's Pierre, and um, I, he's got feathers now. He grew his feathers back, and it's just that's something that um, you never know when an idea is going to come to you. It just it just did, uh, and I'm so honored. <laughs> They wrote a children's story about it. <laughs> um, and it is really, she, uh, Jean Marzallo, I know, she's the one that does the I Spy books. She, she is fabulous. Uh, the illustrator did a fabulous job. Uh, people now recognize me because of this book. Um, and we're actually, she'll be at Author's Alley tomorrow. Um, I think right around one, something, um, yeah. And um, she'll be there to sign the books and the books will be there. And she'll also be reading the book. Um, and again, I can't believe I was given the honor to be recognized in a children's story. And Pierre is still alive and he looks great. He really looks very, very good. The best I've seen him. So we've got some videos for you, uh, a couple of them. You want to start with the first one? This is Oseo. <laughs> Uh, Oseo has these white, big white cheek patches. African penguins are not usually known for that. They usually just have white stripes. Um, what he's about to do is emit a sound. It's called a bray. Now, we don't have the sound, but it sounds like a donkey. Um, and the males especially, and this is a male. So you, don't, you don't even really need the sound to see how much effort they go through. Um, when the males make that sound, other males will let that basically what they're doing is that's their territory, and they're letting other males know that that's their territory. So you can go to the next one. This is my job. <laughs> uh, so that exhibit that you saw, this is what I'm doing. I have a headset on every day, twice a day. I'm in a wetsuit twice a day. I'm feeding the penguins twice a day, and I'm talking about it. I'm educating people. Um, for me, it is um, a very rewarding job, but the responsibility and having these animals in captivity is that I educate about their lives, and I get to share my life with them and, and theirs with me, and it's a really exciting, enticing thing. So I'm trying to hand feed these birds as individuals, and I have to keep track of every fish that comes out of that bucket and goes into a penguin's mouth. So I'm talking to the public, I'm answering questions, I'm keeping track of what every penguin in there is feeding, uh, and I'm trying not to fall off those rocks that I showed you. So uh, you balance a lot of things. It's a very um, dynamic job, and it, it has a huge, as I said, a huge amount of responsibility with it. Yes, it's fun and exciting and cool. Now, Pam, yeah. when, you, when you say that, that you, uh, you ke you're keeping track of all the fish that you're feeding, can, you can tell all of the penguins apart. Right. To us, they just look like penguins. Right. To you, they're actual, yeah. they're individuals, right? They're, right, absolutely. And, I know. Can, and how do you tell? Is it, is it always markings on their skin? Is it the, how can you always tell? There's a number of things. Um, the faces look different to me now. So some of the faces are longer, some are wider. Huh. Um, their beaks are all a little bit different. I guess uh, they all are. I guess it's probably like a penguin asking another penguin how they can tell the difference between people, right? Like, right. well, we all look different. If you look actually, you know what to look for. <laughs> I don't know what to look for in a penguin. Uh, what I look for is those, the markings for sure. Um, also behavior. So uh, it's an animal that always consistently comes towards me, goes away from me. Mm -hmm. um, how they interact with each other. Um, they look completely different. And in that me. video, some of the dudes were just hanging out up, up uh, upstairs. Yeah. What, why aren't they? Wa why aren't they wanting food? They don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, um. but you have food. <laughs> Right, I know, I have food. Um, the bird on the right-hand side was replacing his feathers. All penguins are supposed to replace their feathers once a year, which Pierre did not, which is why he wore, wore the wetsuit. Um, he's replacing his feathers. They don't swim when they're replacing feathers. So uh. That's number one. Um, and then there's a bird up there, and, and it happens to be Pierre, too. He's been very significant in my life in terms of responsibility. Um, I was on a, a surgeon's table, a, a veterinarian, and talk about this. This is really fun. Um, he had cataract surgery. 
Um, so his vision is somewhat limited, even post-surgery. You give the penguins cataract surgery? Surgery. Yeah. My grandmother couldn't <laughs> even know, get cataract I surgery. I know, and, that's, and people are so amazed. I mean, yes, I've been an MRIs with penguins uh, for lower back pain. <laughs> and I, you know what? Um, How do they communicate that they have lower back pain? <laughs> that is the hardest thing. <laughs> Go my backers. <laughs> that is the hardest thing about my Do job. Do they bray like that? No. Um, <laughs> he was beginning to, that particular bird was not uh, walking normally anymore. Uh -huh. um, and it progressed to so a So he came up to you and pointed his little fin at I his know, back. I know, he's like, this is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so um, in terms of the cataract surgery, so I walk into the veterinarian who does it, and she mostly does cats and dogs, and she has her regular patients in there, so I'm walking in with this penguin, <laughs> you know, and there's all these people, these cats and dogs around, and they just couldn't believe their eyes. Uh, and, and it had to continue to keep going for um, updates with the veterinarian. For, and uh, it's the same thing. You know, every time I'm in there, I'm like walking around with this penguin in my hand. And <laughs> it's pretty funny. Imagine yep. being in a veterinarian's office and a penguin walking by you. you know? um, <laughs> that like, sounds like the, the setup to a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please thank Pam. <laughs> thank you.